comic book fans everywhere. You are now listening to the official Crossover Comics Podcast with your hosts at JJ's Comic Stuff and at Longbox Entertainment. What is going on, everybody? You are listening to the Crossover Comics Podcast. My name is Jeremy. I am here with my co-host, Michael, as always. And today we are talking the Batman animated series from 1992. And here to help us talk about that series is I am Batman 915 from TikTok. What is up, my guy? Man, what's up, guys? It's 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 such a good feeling to be a part of this because obviously I know you guys. It's real positive, and let's get into this. Yes, yes. So we're gonna be out here because this year marks the 30th anniversary of B Taz. Ah, oh, man, this is this is crazy. Actually, I want to start off with a question. Do y'all remember the first time you ever experienced Batman the Animated Series? Not specifically. I I do remember being in my room when I was probably, I don't know, eight, maybe seven, Mm -hmm. playing with like the big plastic Batmobile toys and watching the show at the same time. So it was, yeah, that I don't remember when exactly that was, and I don't remember what episode it was, but I was playing with the toys at the same time I was watching the show. That is like my earliest memories of that show. Man, if I had to be realistic, the earliest memory of me watching that show was the origin of me being a nerd as I am today. Like the very, I remember the very first episode I watched was Bane. And I was like, what is this? This is so cool. It was nothing like like what we would watch like way back mm, then, right. the early 90s cartoons. It was so gritty and dark, but it had like a little bit of uh, light in there and a little bit of hope. But it was really fun to watch. I didn't know what it was, but I was like, you know what? I want to watch this. I want to watch. I was really poor. So I'd watch it from my from my house. I would look through the window to watch it to my neighbor's house because I didn't have a TV growing up. And I was like, dude, I don't know what this is, but it's so cool. And eventually when we got a TV, I'd watch it 24, whenever I could. Boom, boom. I'd wake up early. I don't care. Right, right, right. I remember, so my time, because I was born in 98. So of course I missed the original like run of it. Uh, But I remember Toonami, used to play episodes Mm -hmm. and i remember me and my grandfather we would watch episodes of uh batman the animated series that was like our little our little bonding time and i remember i had these vhs uh tapes that i have like a couple episodes i remember i had a poison ivy one which is probably the reason why i love poison ivy so much and i had a two-faced one and as y'all know, Two Face is my favorite Batman villain. So I guess that that kind of made me like the type of Batman oh. fan I am today. But yeah, but yeah, man, that's my first memory. Um, you know, the crazy thing about this show, it was very revolutionary for the time. Oh yeah, oh yeah, hundred percent. This like- was the darkest like kids show. At and it's time, true because they had sure. a lot of rules and regulations where they they uh, they got away with only because Batman was doing so good because of the block uh, the blockbuster film obviously Batman um, mm-hmm. and like like that's why Robin was uh, a little bit older because they couldn't show a child in danger because of the, of the regulations back then right because he was in college in, mm-hmm. in the in the show yep makes sense makes sense I, I always thought it was crazy like how they actually had guns being fired like actual guns. all the time like every there was, episode every episode exactly yes. no other cartoon had that none zero you can go look none of them had it like yes. once in a while there'd be like a super crazy episode where they'd have to run away from people shooting at them but you would rarely even see the bullets ricochet off of anything true true and then you would the thing i thought like was cool you would see batman get hurt and you would see like the blood and stuff mm-hmm. like this show is pretty pretty crazy like for that time yeah you would never see blood in like earlier cartoons especially like uh 90s base was all bright colors and happy vibes mm-hmm. where this one was dark and brooding even the sky in the background if you ever watch like the origin mm-hmm. the original series was red because they wanted a right. grittier type of uh, background and in case you didn't know the whole intro is actually the first episode they ever aired 
that did so well, and that's why they made it the intro. Uh, oh yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. Because they it was had a like a little um, the pilot. Mm-hmm. It was like a little sizzle reel to show Warner Brothers what they could do with it. Yeah, and in the uh, beginning, like the that pilot episode's intro, I believe, was just music. There was no like. Yeah, there was no commentary. I or am nothing. Batman right. at the end, you know. The the thing I always think was crazy about the intro, it never has the words Batman on it. It's like you just, knew. You just know you just what knew. it is, man. Mm-hmm. Like you know it's Batman. When you make a show and... as well as they did, you don't have to tell people what it is. It literally I mean, because, speaks for itself. Just look and, at and it. And you're, you're right on that. <laughs> because all the other shows during that time were like uh, like X-Men. X-Men was a really popular show back mm-hmm. then. Uh, Spider-Man, Spider-Man animated was a really series. Big show. Mm-hmm. I knew you were going to say Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, that, there's a lot of good shows coming out. Batman was the only one that had no words, no introduction. It was just like, you either get it or you don't. Right. And it was pretty hard not to get it. Right. Yeah, ever on that time... Thing. Uh, they did their thing because, like, even the look of the show is different from like any other cartoon at the time. Especially, I love how one of the creators of the series, Eric Radomski, mm. how he would say they drew on black paper mm-hmm. with pepper, mm-hmm. with pepper to yes. make the grain, to make the grade, so that because they just wanted Gotham to look dirty. They wanted Gotham to look and they, they just wanted to look nailed dark. that. Yes, oh. yes. It was such yes. an interesting because it did everything idea looked like it had a texture to it. Mm-hmm. It may not have been super well defined given the animation limitations back then, but it, it was always like you could tell, like okay, they're in a sewer, or okay, they're in an alley that has not been cleaned in probably decades. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? And, True. And I and I. I think another thing, those character designs, man, like some of them, when I think of some of these characters, it's the BTAS versions that pop into my head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like having Batman with that really square jawline and, mm-hmm. you know. A very small like crown of the head. Like, yes. See, I, I love the fact that you bring that up because Batman the Animated Series would do this thing where they would grab characters that are already created and flip their origin and put it on on display for newer and incoming like uh, bat fans because nobody knew who uh, Mr. Ice or Mr. Freeze was. And then they mm-hmm. retold his whole origin, like the origin that everyone knows with uh, Nora being frozen and him doing what he can for love. That's not his origin. That's from Batman the Animated Series, which I always thought was really interesting. But everybody to this day only knows that origin because of the Batman animated series. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Actually, speak speaking on that, Batman the animated series is responsible for a lot of stuff that we have in comics today. Whether it would be Mister Freeze's origin, Harley Quinn, um, the character Red Claw. Lock up. Red I was gonna say, yes. I was just about to say, I've got a list right here. Uh, the <laughs> show gave us the first appearance of. Harley Quinn, Detective Renee Montoya, Lock of Simon Trent, uh, Condiment King, Kyoto Ken. Um, we also had Roland Daggett, Red Claw, Lloyd Ventrix, Sewer King, Boss Big, Boss Biggest, Grant Walker, Hardak, and Emil Dorian. I mean, yes. that is a lot of new characters in one show, and they oh, only went yeah. for four seasons. And a lot of them are now in the comics man like that is mm-hmm. so crazy to me the name on Toya is the the question now correct the question mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so Actually, not only did renee get you know boosted like harley quinn did because of the show but also it was, she got her own comic out of it pretty much mm-hmm. like she became yeah. a whole other character in a whole other situation mm-hmm. and right now she's the the commissioner mm-hmm. of oh, uh, yeah. the gcpd so like, yeah <laughs> That character has skyrocketed, you know? Uh, and, I mean, we don't even have to say what happened with Harley Quinn. Like, they created oh, that character yeah. solely for the show, and yes. it exploded. Yes. She was only supposed to be for that one episode. But the people that were writing in told them that they liked her so much, so they just like, you know what, let's keep going. And I love I, – I know this is off topic a little bit, but it is – I love the fact that 
Batman animated series, every voice actor would come together and all work together for every show. Not not yes. one or one or one, everyone. Yes. Because you can really tell, like, the voice acting in that show, it doesn't sound like, like it's being voice acted. It just sounds like it's being acted out. Mm-hmm. And they're just mm-hmm. capturing, you know, the audio from that. And I think that's why it sounds so authentic. And I just love that. Well, and I think a lot of that has to do with some of the voice actors they had, too. I mean, you've got Kevin Conroy, Mark Hamill, Bob Hastings is James Gordon, yes. Ephraim Zimbalist, top you know, tier. like you've got top tier. Like some of these guys were Shakespearean actors in their prime. Oh, you know, and, like, and, and, I mean, and it's true. True. You've, it's it it's, true. It, it just keeps going. There's like literally a list of like 65 you know, different like, actors <laughs> that all played main yeah, characters. Yeah, I would know like maybe 15, but there's a lot. Hey, you know I mean, we want to keep going. There's Richard actors. Mole who played Two Face. You've got mm-hmm. Zatara who was played by Vincent Chivelli. I mean, like seriously, <laughs> like hey, you know, I can keep going. Like those voice actors are Michael so Ansara, good. Mr. Freeze. I mean, come uh, on. Yeah. Oh, ch- a chilling performance. If you if you ask me, I love I love <laughs> Mr. Freeze in that that show. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, Heart man. of Ice, beautiful. And you know the crazy thing about uh, that Mr. Freeze, because, you know, a lot of people, one of the biggest gripes about Mr. Freeze in the Batman and Robin movie was the the ice puns, right? The puns. But I'm like, B-Taz is Mr. Freeze. He had puns as well. He had puns. It was it, he was more serious. I think, yeah, it was yes. a delivery. The delivery was amazing. It was much more of a serious tone when he would say him in the show, rather than mm-hmm. when he said him in the movie. It was definitely made to make you laugh almost oh like. yeah exactly exactly and to this day like these voice actors these are the voices i hear in my head when you read them when right? i am reading mm-hmm. yes i mean it's really Speaking hard not to read the, something with the joker the actor, and not Rachel hear mark Cole? hamill always hear him oh yeah i can't mark i can't hamill, hear yes. anybody else because for me i was born in 1990 mark hamill was my first joker you know, I didn't oh, yeah. see Jack Nicholson's Joker or Cesar Romero's Joker, Joker <laughs> until before that, or until yeah. way later when I was a little bit older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark Hamill had that gift. He really did. That man. I he, mean, he, and he can because, switch it on like that. Like, if you've ever well, seen of, him at a con or anything, like, he can literally oh, jump yeah. into the Joker voice immediately. Like, <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so I'm bad with uh, with names, but originally the Joker was going to be voiced by the guy who we know as the original It. Oh, Tim mm-hmm. Curry. Yes. Yep. But they said Tim his Curry, voice was yeah. too scary. So then they had Mark Hamill try and he hit that perfectly. That because they wanted and, scary, but they wanted funny scary. They didn't mm-hmm, want mm-hmm. like sadistic because scary, which show, is what yeah. Tim Curry brings to a lot of stuff. And then, and then Kevin Conroy initially wasn't going to be Batman. He was trying for uh, what's his name, Bullock. Bullock. He, yeah, he, he was trying wow. for Bullock. Yeah, Bullock. And they, they they loved his voice. They were like, "Hey, can you read this?" And he read some Batman lines. And they're like, "Can you give it a little darker?" And when he did it, they're like, "Boom! You're Batman!" Don't. Don't don't worry about it. You're bad, man. But they made crazy. the right choice. That's crazy. I, I always um, the funny thing about the whole Tim Curry situation because supposedly they still have audio of Tim Curry's laugh, and supposedly you can hear it in one episode. It was like one of the like the robots or something. I heard or this. Like, I've I've never caught that? it though. I've never caught it either. Maybe I just haven't like paid attention to it enough. But I yeah. I feel like you would have to adjust your settings in the audio for you to like mm-hmm. dim down what they add so you could hear his original laugh. Right, right, right. And then, but if we're, if we're talking about if we're talking about episodes, I I know you want to add on to this. If you're gonna go first long box, that's fine. Oh episode. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get to episodes. Oh oh I'm, yes, we're I'm everywhere with them because um. I've actually I've been rewatching uh, Batman the animated series because um, that would kind of like spark this whole idea because I was watching it and then the 30th anniversary hit and I was like oh this is a sign <laughs> I immediately 
message JJ. I was like, I know the idea for our next episode, bro. <laughs> it's 30 years. 30 years. I mean, because in my head, subconsciously, I was like, that's 30 years Harley Quinn. But at the same time, I'm like, that means it's 30 years for the Batman anime and TV show. Because obviously, mm-hmm. that's when she first right. appeared. Man, that's yeah, crazy. So 30 crazy. years. What's even crazier is that I'm two years older than the show. I turn 30 next <laughs> month, so that's in my head. I'm like 30 years. Well, you know, I'm a youngin. <laughs> uh, I'm only, well, I'm only five years younger than the show, so it's not, it's not that far off. You know? No, that's, that's not, not that bad. far off. Like but, you said, you remember like the tail end of it being on TV while it was on Toonami and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So. Yeah, You're not it, that far off. Because I it remember was see, watching the, it on uh, like, on WB Network, but that was way back. Whew, that was WB, back I remember that. TW, you know what I'm saying? That was back I when remember it, that. that. We could do a whole other episode just on old shows from that. Freak <laughs> was my joint. I remember that. Right, right, right. Actually, most of the episodes I caught like on TV were the – the new Batman Adventures episodes mm, where like the season three, animation right? was revamped. It was slightly so, updated. And then they had, uh, that was the one where Robin was featured much, much heavier. Yes. It was Tim Drake's Robin. At the Tim time. Drake, yeah. Batgirl, the new band. Well, in the version. comics, they were fresh off of, you know, killing off Jason Todd around that time. So, yes, which is, which is funny. Cause Paul Dini, has said that he wanted to do Jason Todd, mm-hmm. but WB was just like, no. <laughs> well, because they knew where that storyline eventually had to go, and they're yeah. like, you're not doing that on TV. What? <laughs> not on a kid's funny, show. It's very funny when you when you think about Tim Drake in that show, because basically Tim Drake was Jason Todd. Like, they changed he his was. origin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His origin fit Jason Todd to a point, to exactly. Yeah, it's like, come on. So it, it basically was Jason Todd without it being Jason Todd. And basically, that's, that's that how they got away with it. Yeah, it was and Jason, then, but you know, they named him Tim. Because let's be honest, the they were not going to allow that crowbar scene to go down mm-hmm. on TV. So even in uh, because he even had a a dark end to his Robin story, because you know the oh, Joker yeah. and what happened in Batman Beyond. So. It's like, yeah, it's that is another thing. Like back then, you didn't have a lot of shows tying into each other. Yes, yeah, you're right. Not the way those ones did. Like all three of those series, you could basically call them a trilogy if they were made in movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because it went you Batman can. animated series, Batman New Adventures, and that was Robin, and he's got you know, and then Batman Beyond, like you said, Bruce is too old. You got. Terry McGinnis that comes in, and then you've got mm-hmm. Tim Drake, who ends up becoming basically the Joker. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. And it's like the fact this series means. And they're all so the much. same characters. They mention each other's, like, what happens in those series. Like, it, there's a lot of callbacks, mm-hmm. and they didn't do that a whole lot back then. True. Oh, yeah. No. And then you think the only show I they, can think about did, that uh, was Superman. doing that back then was um, Star Trek. Because they had like yeah. three or s- series or something, and they always called back to what was going on in the other series and whatnot. But yeah, true that. Like even oh. even like when they did Superman, and you had the the Batman episodes when they would team up on there, or like Justice League. Like because of this show, we would have ne- if we didn't have this show, we would have never got Justice League. Mm-hmm. See, and you're fully correct on that. Yeah. Because Batman was the first show that DC put out that actually did really well. Mm-hmm. Well, because the Batman movie did so well, so they were like, you know what? Let's let's try a show. Let's do a kids show. Get well, more kids. If you make comics. a kids show, you got toys, and we all know the Ooh, '90s was about yeah. the toy game. <laughs> all about the toys, man. All about them toys. <laughs> I mean, even the the 80s and 90s, any basically any kid show was completely geared to make toys out of it. True. Oh, yeah. I remember Those toys are cool, too. I, I had some action figures from BTAS, but I've never had, like, a regular Batman. It would be, like, a Batman, and he had, like, a green costume. Different or suit. Or he yeah. had, it's like, because the original one or... was so hard to find. Yeah. 
because collectors were eating those up even back then. Collectors, it just wasn't. Kids, it, it just wasn't as prevalent as it is now, where you've got like they'll make a line of toys for kids, and then they'll make the collectors' line of toys for adults. Facts. That dudes be Facts. using for like figure photography or just collecting in general or whatever. They get the rare ones <sighs> and flip them. Facts, man. It. Ooh. This show, this show, man, I tell you. But I guess this is a good segue into our next point, our episodes themselves. Like, yes. what are what are your favorite episodes or certain episodes that you remember or anything like that? There are oh, so many. There's so many good ones. There Nothing are. to fear with the uh, first appearance of Scarecrow, Bane, oh, obviously yeah, Bane. Yeah, yeah. Almost got him. Has all the villains with their storytelling. Um, oh yes, I think that poker. was probably one of my mm-hmm. favorite episodes, just because you got to see a lot of the behind the scenes of what the villains are doing. You know, like mm-hmm. that kind of stuff is always interesting to me because you always see what the heroes are doing when they're not in fighting, but you never get to see what the villains are really doing. True. Man, it's because there's so so many good ones. Even Mudslide, the one with Clayface, part one and part two. Beautiful. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. Honestly, the... even the condiment man. Heart of Ice. Is good. Heart of Ice is classic. Like Heart of it's... Ice, man. You can't go wrong with that episode. Um, one of my favorite episodes is actually, uh, "There's No Hope for Crime Alley." Oh, that one is a good one too. Oh man, there's so many good ones, man. Just, it's Leslie Tompkins. It's yeah. It's amazing. Um, obviously, what was what was that one called? Uh, Man Bat is on leather wings, I believe. Yes, mm. on leather wings. Man, there's so many see, good that's ones. That's another character that we don't get to see much, and we only really saw a whole lot of in Batman the animated series was Man Bat. Man Bat. He showed up like only True. like three times. Also, yeah. a Christmas with the Joker like the, is the whole reason we have that song. Man Bat. Christmas with the Joker was amazing. Cla- it's a classic episode. That's, that's where that's we got. That's got to be Jingle my Bells, all-time Jingle favorite Bells, episode. Batman smells. That's where it comes from. True. True. That's got to be my all-time but, favorite episode because you know how hard that song went when I was in elementary school. Like, <laughs> bro. <laughs> he said, "You know how hard it went." <laughs> It was a banger. It was a certified banger. Bro, the playground, everybody was singing that. Had the playground all the time. Like right before and right after Christmas break, it was done for. The teachers hated us by the time it was time to go on winter break. Well, because initially, if you if you watch it anywhere, it's the first episode, but if you buy the DVD, it's the second episode. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that that episode's a classic. I mean, come on, Christmas and the Joker. Max like, it's got its own little order. I don't know what they're doing on mm-hmm. the streaming service. Just know if any of our viewers or listeners, just know if you watch Batman the Animated Series on HBO Max, it is out of order. Yeah, so, it is out of order. It's so frustrating. <laughs> Why would they so do annoying. that? That's like when they put a show on Netflix and only put seasons two through six. And they leave out seasons one and eight. Like, <laughs> I mean, it has all the episodes. It's just out of order. Beware of That's Grey Ghost. Crazy. That's the one I was thinking of. That one's good, That's too. That's the best episode, man. You had Adam West come back. To Adam Grey West. Ghost. Adam West. Ghost. I forgot about Adam West coming back mm-hmm. in that episode. Yeah. And he was playing man. an actor that pretty much his career went to shit. It was, Which it was, he was pretty much what happened himself. to him. Yeah. He played himself. He was playing himself. Because after was, he played Batman, he, he couldn't so get well. any serious roles for a long time. Mad as a Hatter with Mad Hatter. That one was dope. Mad Hatter is always oh, an yeah. underrated villain, He's I thought. Super underrated villain. Ooh, because speaking he, of Mad Hatter, control. pretends to dream. Ooh. Pretends Ooh. to dream where, where Batman, he wakes up. But he's in a world where he's about to get married to Selena Kyle, and his parents mm-hmm. are still alive. God, and find out it's the pain. all because of Mad Hatter. Oh, dude, so good. God. So good. Uh, you know which one I really liked. Speaking of, because Two Face, Robin's Reckoning. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Because Tony's a lot of people gold. don't know that 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 Two Face is the reason for Robin's uh, dead parents. And a lot of people don't understand that. And I'm like, dude, he's 
That's, yeah, because it actually, um, it wasn't Batman and Robin. It was uh, uh, Batman Forever. Batman yeah, Batman Forever, Forever yeah, where think, they I show that. They actually show right? how Two Face mm -hmm. ended up. Episode, right? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, that in that movie, Sins they did father. show Ro uh, Robin's Sins origin, of which is crazy. Yeah, that was called Sins of the Father. The one, the the Robin's Reckoning, that was the Dick Grayson origin. The Tony Dick Grayson, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Joker's I, Wild I'm is a good one. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. With the Joker's casino. Wild. Oh, I forgot all about that one, too. Honestly, the Two-Face origin episode. That was the one with the roulette table trap, wasn't it? it was... <sighs> like, if I can't remember. I remember so some kind of casino, like, big trap thing that him and Robin got stuck Joker's on. Joker's Wild. That was, it was okay. Really yeah. Yeah. Oh man, so many good episodes. I, I like, love the fact that the whole quote that we all know and love from Batman is like, "I am vengeance. I am the night. Oh, I am Batman." That's from that's from um, that's from the Scarecrow episode from yeah. season two. Yep. And I was like, "Wasn't it uh, nothing to fear?" Nothing to fear is the episode. And that's when they finally started using it in the intro, and it is after that episode aired. Well, actually, um, okay, so season one, two, and three are Batman the animated series, and after that, like Batman Adventures, depending oh, okay, on where you watch you. it, obviously, because the DVDs yeah. and and HBO Max they just they're both different, and it, it's I mean it still counts as the it's still like the same show, like because. The new, the new Batman Adventures or whatever they called it, Batman Adventures, whatever. Those were good. Like those were solid episodes. I know some people didn't like the revamp animation, like especially the mm -hmm. Joker, because he didn't have his red lips, and that was kind of weird. oh yeah. I it kind of threw me off for the longest time, but I, I eventually I was like, ah, okay. I eventually, I actually ended up liking that better, just because it made him look a little bit more serious. I can understand that. I can understand. Yeah, that. I, I didn't hate it. It, it was crazy. different. And then, and like, the I, whole... I don't like the whole anarchist type Joker that they portray in the Dark Knight movie. Just mm. like, not saying Heath Ledger didn't do a fantastic, outstanding job in that role, mm. but my favorite Joker is just the one that wants to play with Batman. <laughs> yes, and that should be and the a, point. And that's Mark Hamill, and that. <laughs> yeah. That's what that and, and that's what Batman. That's what the Joker should be to Batman. You know, mm -hmm. like he just does things because he just wants to mess with him. He wants to mess with Batman. He wants to test Batman. He wants to. I I don't feel like he's the type. Don't get me wrong. His IQ is is high, but I don't feel like he's the person to go out and make all these plans for Batman. He's like, nah, I'm gonna mess with him. I don't care what it is. I'm gonna mess with him. He True. plans out like two or three steps ahead, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. That's it, After yeah. that, he's like, he. It, that's the one thing they did get <laughs> right matches. in the Dark Knight, which is where they said, "I don't know what I would do with it if I caught it." You did know, you, like that's kind of yeah. how the Joker has always been. Like, what? I, I don't know what I'm actually gonna do with you if I ever do catch you. <laughs> that is true. That I is just true. like trying. <laughs> so, actually, speaking of like how the comics and how this show really it was really the comics like it felt like bronze age batman comics brought mm -hmm. to life um with a little bit of the the post crisis era like mixed in but have y'all ever read like the batman adventures like comic book series mm -hmm. i have those i have not those are really really good um they honestly, those are the ones that I feel are like, like people don't almost, talk about them enough. Those are the ones that are spun well, directly out of the show, right? Yes, mostly oh, because yeah. DC doesn't reprint those things. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, that's why I got them quick. I was like, I have to get these. But uh, yeah, those those comics are like really really good. I love how it fleshes out like the world a little bit more, especially when it mm -hmm. comes to Barbara Gordon and Dem Grace oh. Dick Grayson. With their relationship, yes. okay, uh, that was interesting. I didn't, I didn't agree with what comes after, but not, not I what like comes that. after. I, I, yeah. that's, 
not what comes after, but the initial. Because <laughs> I liked how they 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 went to the same uh, college, mm-hmm. and they would bicker, <clears throat> like Dick Grayson and Barbara Gordon. They wouldn't get along. Oh but no, not at first. When they were Batgirl and Robin, they would be flirting with each other mm-hmm. because they didn't know, like you know, who was who? each other's identities. Mm-hmm. Um, which has got to be somewhat of like that's got to be almost like a schizophrenic type tendency <laughs> right. to be able right. to like not tell the the person like I'm sorry but if you're spending that much time with somebody even if they got masks on and don't know each other's true identity you really can't yes. tell that the same person you're going to class with is the same person you just jumped off a building with the night before <laughs> like come on right <laughs> like you don't see that red hair coming out of her cow, come on. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, come on, Grayson, come on, man. That's, that's that's some serious compartmentalization right there, man. Like, there's that's secret right. agents who did, can't compartmentalize that good. Facts, true. That. And then, like, um, I remember me and Batman. We was actually talking about the whole the holiday special. Issue. Oh, I love that one. I, I have that one. That issue is amazing. It's up there. I don't want to so well for written. JJ, but if you oh, got dude, DC you know universe, how hard it's going to be for me to, to track those down because I do I mean, not can... have DC Universe right now. Ah, oh, man. But yeah, if you if you ever get DC Universe, just read that story it's so good i might it's have good... to soon because i've pretty much quit buying dc single issues at this point yeah it's it's really good for it being like an animated type of vibe and it's looking straight mm-hmm. off of the animated series it does really well with connecting with mr freeze and batman and a little bit of emotional but it's really good and it's but see i like fact... comics that if they're based off the show i almost want them to look like the show oh it's like identical it's identical. You know, like, because like, there's a new one that just came out this past week, Star Trek Lower Decks, looks exactly like the show in the comic book. Like, it's like identical. If you could, let me see. Basically, it's the show. Okay, you know? yeah, that's dope. It's, it's the show. And this is actually, so, for our uh, listeners, not really our watchers, but... They actually have continued Batman the Animated Series, and it's from this new line of comic books called Batman the Adventures Continue. And the thing I love about it, the fact that they don't call it um, Volume 1 or Volume 2, it's like they call it Season 1 and then Season 2, so those are actually really cool. But yeah, I just think these books are actually really good, and I think people should check them out. And they also brought Jason Todd within the animated series universe. Really? Okay, I need to get a hold of those. That's my favorite thing about that. Yes, my favorite. Because I feel like with Jason, they normally, for the animated series, they brushed them off and put Tim there with Jason's origin and they were just like, ah, we don't have to worry about Jason. But the fact that the show did so well and then they started making comics, they were like, you know what? Right. I feel like now we can Oh, and they also brought Deathstroke in here. So this is the first time you see Deathstroke um in this universe. The Court of mm-hmm. Owls get brought in. in. Series, yep. Okay. They went hard oh, with these. Like you guys know yes. I'm definitely grew up a Marvel kid a lot, and nowadays it's a like lot a lot of, of indie introduced. stuff. So DC, I am so far behind in reading DC stuff, it's insane. You know me, I'm a I'm a DC I just love DC. <laughs> I don't know why. I do like Marvel, but I mean I like collecting I, right. I like I like reading both, but I only collect that. Because I um Yeah. People were like, oh, you just read Batman. I was like, no, I read Spider Man. I like Fantastic Four. They're like, what? That's what people don't yeah, realize Dr. like you Dr. can read Doom, stuff without Midnight. actually collecting it. I don't mind. Like, <laughs> true. Exactly. Don't get me wrong. Right. I used to collect everything. Like, before, I still spent way too much time, money so on comics, like, you know probably. But like, I've cut it way <laughs> down from when I first started buying them again. 
because I was literally yeah, just pre-ordering I, uh... everything. I, I didn't care what it was at first for a while. I was just pre-ordering everything, and I was spending like 200 bucks a week for a minute. And I'm like, yeah, I can't do this. Man, that's why that's why I stick to collected editions. <laughs> like, I still buy singles, of course, just not as much. Like My pool list only has like five books on it. Yeah, nowadays I've got it down to like six or seven, and then maybe I'll grab a couple other things I see off the shelf that I didn't have yeah. on my pool. But nah, every every week I'm like twenty to thirty books. Can't be me. I have to get. Can't be me. Once we start getting some sponsors for the podcast, then, <laughs> 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 then right, we right, can start right. buying more stuff. But <laughs> right. Um, Speaking of, I'm going to so, take this opportunity to say ooh. we are accepting sponsors at this time. So if you're interested, please get in touch with us here at Crossover Comics Podcast. Boom, quick plug. How you like that? I love that. That actually <laughs> sounded very professional. I, I really like that. that was I have good. my moment. <laughs> that was very professional. I forgot I, forgot I was on a podcast. I, I have my moment. Like, I was like, radio voice, man. Yeah. Tony, he uh, has man. a radio so, voice. <laughs> Speaking of voices, I know I'm just going to throw that in. I feel like Harley Quinn, oh, uh, the Harley voice actor, Sorkin? did such a did perfect job on her. Mm-hmm. That, voice, that voice is I mean, all I hear every time I read Harley. Harley Quinn. That's I can't hear anybody else. Dini based the character off of. Like, she, she's Harley. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's Harley. I don't care what it is because other people are like, oh, uh, I really like Margot Robbie's Margot Robbie's voice. voice, Or do you uh... just really like Margot Robbie? Like, (laughs) or do you? Right. That's what it is. Exactly. Or is this really late? (laughs) That's what I tell people because I'm like, no, like, Harleen Quinn. It's literally based off the voice actress that plays her. Nobody else. I don't hear no. Harley, and there's exactly. actually. Um, now I feel like most people who have played Harley have done great jobs. Like I don't think there's a bad Harley Quinn voice actor out there so far. There's not. Oh yeah, I don't. But think there is, no, because and Margot Robbie no. did great as Harley Quinn, but you're not ever gonna beat out the original on that one. Cause who who who's the voice actress on the the HBO Speaking Max of Harley. show, the Harley Quinn uh, show? Because she's um, good. She does a good job as well. We need a Jamie. Oh. Her name is like Kaylee. Because she was in the Big Bang Theory. She played uh, Penny. I know. I, I cannot remember her, her name. Mm-hmm. She played Penny. Kaylee. Um, Kelly Kelly Cuoco? Cuoco? There we go. That that sounds about mm-hmm. right. I always that mess her last right. name up. But I knew it, it was something right. like that. <laughs> you know, another thing was crazy. Like, the... BTAS also started the Harley Quinn and like Poison Ivy, you know, relationship. Yeah. Uh huh. The relationship after mm-hmm. after uh, Joker and her started fighting, it was Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy, and then obviously the last episode was <laughs> <laughs> Mad Love. Oh. Just throwing that out there. Goated. Had had to get that one PG seed. I love just it. for just for it. long box. Man, that episode is so good, and I'm surprised they aired it because of all the like abuse and stuff they had in it. I was really shocked they Joker had that. Joker pushes her out of a window mm-hmm. at the end of the the episode. He, he uh, that, that's why he I don't beats understand. Her kicks the her out of people a, out a there window. that are like, I want a Harley Quinn and Joker relationship. Like, do you though? It's because they watch. Do you Suicide really? <laughs> Even that, he pushed her out of a damn helicopter. Like, (laughs) to be fair, I feel like what they mean is they want that intense feeling for somebody. Like, I was gonna say, like, have y'all watched that show or read these comics? Like, that is one of the most abusive relationships in comics. Yeah, that's what. And you're 100% right. I tell people all the time, in case you didn't know, Joker has a pit 
of deceased Harley Quinns who would not do what he said, so he chained them up and left them there. Yeah. There's been tons of Harley Quinns, but yeah. we only know one. So, one yeah, the next time bastard. The, our listeners decide they want that relationship, y'all might want to think twice. Yeah. Research. Research. <laughs> Research is a powerful please. thing, man. It's not ideal. <laughs> Read a book. <laughs> <laughs> that's. I think that's the hardest thing for when uh, I talk to people, especially about comics or comic criteria. It's always like, like, like what JJ was saying. It was like people want Joker and Harley Quinn relationship. I'm like, I don't think you truly want that. Joker gives her a knife and says, "If you love me, I need yeah, to like, cut off your face." Come on, yeah. guys, like. This is not the relationship you want. That is not. <laughs> That's not, but not a good a, idea. I have a friend. Oh my gosh. She now she yeah. doesn't she doesn't read comics or whatnot, but she she I don't know why she likes that god awful Suicide Squad movie. I don't not I don't know why. I guess different strokes for different folks, right? Hey, I got a buddy who loved it too, so and she <laughs> she she's one of those they're goals. Uh, and I'm like, nah. No. And I know if she's watching this, if she's watching this, yes, I'm talking about you. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think there was low key, key, low key blast her. Low key. Man, but... <laughs> I think that's what we call putting somebody on blast. Like, <laughs> oh, man. Man. hey, hey, at least I kept her name out. At least I kept her name out. Mm, fair, but. For now, but yeah, um, yeah, man, it's just it's crazy. Like the things that BTAS did, you know, gave us Harley. We wouldn't even be talking about we wouldn't even be talking about her if it wasn't for this show. No, and then <laughs> like it, there was movies that spun off the and, show. And too. They have they have so much. Yes, Mask of the Phantasm. Mm-hmm. Probably the best animated Batman movie of all time. Oh, I love that movie. Yep. I love that movie. Sub Zero. Yep. Also, Batman. Uh, what is the it? Bat Sub Zero. That one's a good one too. And then, of course. Oh, that one's you know. good too. I feel like, I feel like personally, Batman the animated uh, TV show started the DC mm-hmm. animated universe because. We got so many DC movies, and the animated movies now, and all of them are so if that good. show didn't do as well as it did. Yeah, exactly. Like all all these shows. I'm telling you, we got characters, movies, comics, Top notch, everything. Dude. Even Top the tier. toys back then were just oh yeah up there. Everyone had a Batman broken, toy, and you didn't have the little missile launchers that came with it anymore. But you still had everything. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they'd end yes. up down like an air vent, or them. they'd end but up inside a VCR as as or the game console, or you know, who knows? It'd just be gone. I put mine in the fish tank, believe it or not, because I thought it could turn right. into like a so okay. A, a little I think I got a segment that we could segue into. Speaking of spinoffs from tank. the show, this is a good one to end the podcast Uh-oh. on. The Caped Crusader animated series that was supposed to come out. JJ, why are you opening up wounds, bro? <laughs> like... Now, hang on. Hang on. Before yeah, why are you putting sad, salt on wounds? It has been said that it's still coming out. Okay. I hope. It's I hope. just... I, I hope. hope I really do hope that's out true. on HBO Max. I don't know where it's going. Maybe is what they're gonna end up doing with it, but like the DVD thing about probably. it is, it's like it's pretty much the whole original cast. Yeah, it's like the the original creators are working on oh, this show. Bruce like Taylor. this, be perfect. yeah, and it, it's a prequel series to the original animated series. Mm-hmm. Bruce Timm is because Batman looks like a he looks see like that's the gonna be so fire. Mm-hmm. He's got the real long. Uh, he got the real long ears. He got the golden yeah, age short, with the purple gloves. Purple gloves. And, the, and I'm like, oh, the dude, cow. I can't, yeah. I can't 
wait. Like, I Especially, I just so bought bad. the facsimile issue for Detective Comics 27, yeah. which is the first appearance of Batman. And so I'm just freshly reading, like, r- fresh off reading, watching him with the extra long ears, with the purple gloves, with the with the black sedan that was just a black sedan before he had the Batmobile. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be interested if they give him the whole black man. Cadillac like he had mm-hmm. in that original story, rather heard, than a Batmobile. Like, I heard that the Maybe. animation is going to be similar to the short that they released from, I think it was Batman's seventy fifth anniversary, mm-hmm. where it was the Strange Days and it was all in black and white. He went against. Uh, Hugo that, I don't. Strange. I don't know if they said it was going to be all black and white, but I know cool. it was going to be more of like a chromatic color tone for the show. Like it was going to be that style. Like yeah, that yeah. was a good taste mm-hmm. of like the style it was going to be. But yeah, like I'm. I want it to happen. Like the fact that Bruce Tim has said that this was going to be Batman the animated series without any of the restrictions. Mm-hmm. It was because it's it's it, he said it's the Batman story. Oh, see that right there gives do, me but chills. They wouldn't let us in the nineties. Yeah. See, and that's that's that right there is crazy because they let this show go on more than any other show and do extra things and get away with these things because of the Batman movie that came out that did so well. They were like, you know what? I guess we can have guns. I guess we can have kids in danger. I guess we can uh, we can have abuse or drugs or whatever they put in there. And they allowed it. It's wild. It's wild. Knowing, knowing it was so... It did so well that it helped the show push all these boundaries, which helped a generation grow and become inspired by this whatever you want to call vigilante crime fighter. And we grew up with this character, seeing him overcome all these things and, and fighting these huge foes that we've never heard of, but became iconic in their own it way. Is. And it's, it's it a is. beautiful thing, honestly. Like, it really is. This, this show, like it means a lot to a lot of people. Like I remember when I met Kevin Conroy, just hearing his voice, like, in person <laughs> it was like dude like i'm actually talking to batman right now bro okay so and, he... dude i almost wanted to i, I was Wait, did you cry? i'm not even gonna lie i was shaking like my wife was like are you okay Damn. yeah like yeah i'm good so upon a little bit of further research <laughs> just now yes. it looks like I'm it was me. discovery's decision to drop the Caped Crusader show. So it will not be appearing on HBO or HBO Max, but it is being shopped around to other networks. So I'm sure someone's going to pick it up. I'm bet I'm going to put my money on probably Netflix. Probably Netflix. Probably Netflix. Mm hmm. Never, oh, hey, for Netflix sure, make, because uh, of the profit plus plus Dude, there would be anarchy. There would be oh, anarchy don't say if that, that happened. Don't say oh, that. Another possibility bro. is maybe Fox. All we would get, all we maybe would ever Fox get would is Spider-Man and Batman team up. That's all we would get ever. That's Disney. So it would be on Hulu. Ah, that's true. I don't know. Can you imagine? I don't know what they're going to do. Can you imagine? Just, Get some money. The, but here, the Discovery's reported reasoning for this is what baffles me. They said that they largely are trying to divest from kids and family-related content. If you would look up what they said this show is supposed to be, you would realize really quick this is not a child-friendly show that they're trying to make. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Oh yeah, it should I'm so be glad good. I'm an adult. You know how mad little me would have been that I couldn't watch a <laughs> Batman show. Like, bro. I mean, let's be honest. When we were little kids, there was not as much parental yeah, yeah, yeah. control. Little log over box. What we were you were a short box back but, then. You know, when we were like, kids, there was not as much parental control over what we were watching. Like, that is true. Oh yeah, and and to be fair, that's. That's Video the reason games. why we have ratings today for uh, shows, movies, games, shit. That's why we have, yeah, we have we have uh, 
we have censorship for almost everything now, but because of the stuff we saw when we were younger, it kind of like developed and changed. It's and, just different. Now. I mean, it's not That's a bad thing, is. but I mean, it's a lot different. That is true. That is true. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, it... I, but I, to be honest, it could be 30, 40, 50, <laughs> 60. 80 years so I'm still that's watch that's so another like, thing about it like it's one show. of those shows that actually saying. does age well and there's not a lot of cartoons that age well mm-hmm. that and and batman beyond i will see and will that's funny these until anything oh yeah time again the biggest difference there. with the animation on those i felt like was just it was much cleaner that's funny too because i put on batman beyond like everything was slick everything was metallicized oh, like yeah. metallicized metallicized something like that uh, <laughs> New words. look at here webster over here <laughs> i know one of those words it's all right. is right it's i just right. you know nobody judging blame my high school <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Even when it's your it's, own it's first hard, language, it's, it's hard. Fine. So <laughs> true that, true that, true that. Oh yeah, it's crazy because like I'll try showing my my oldest since he's five now, like cartoons from the nineties to see which one he likes. I tried X Men. There's a lot like, going on in the old X Men show, though. I mean, Peter as Tyler far as the content them. goes, not necessarily even the animation, and I agree. I agree. but like I just the topics that are discussed in that cartoon. Them. It's very much an adult There's or so it goes fast, fast, I was like, Yes, Yo. it's very fast. A little kid's brain is just like flashing lights in pretty colors. That's you know. <laughs> See, and then and then and then I put on. Yeah. You see, you see all these uh, mutants doing all this crazy stuff. You're like, oh, this is cool. I put on Batman. Oh. Instantly. I was say we just can we end this off talking about moment. the music from that show. That dude. <clears throat> The score from that what show was, name? was Shirley... fantastic. I love. I love. Her name was Shirley. Beautiful. Uh, Danny What's Elfman name? and um, Shirley. And Shirley. Uh, I, I can't I... remember her last name. It was that that intro, that whole band setup that they have, whatever it was. Oh, it hit so hard. I remember every time I'd hear that it on made TV, you want to run. run. I don't care where dun, I was. I'd run to the television. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Shirley Walker. Shirley, Shirley Walker. Walker. There it is. You get there and you see Batman squints at the Still bad dead. guys. Yeah, I, I knew Danny Elfman. Yeah, he did the he did the intro. Mm-hmm. Man, that was beautiful. But yeah, like, but even the music that wasn't in the intro, everything throughout each episode, it was just, it would set the tone perfectly for what was going on. They did not miss on that show. Dude, every The lightning. And Shirley, Shirley really did her thing because Mask of the Phantasm was fully composed by her. Oh. Like, mm-hmm. bro. That one was good too. It, it, dude, yeah. they don't make shows with that much attention to quality anymore. They just don't. Not animated like shows. Do, yeah. With such raw emotion anymore, man. I remember when Bruce is crying in Homegirl's like, arms. Yes, like of his they, parents. It was one of the deepest man. I was shows like, yo, was this TV at the this time, is different. Sure. Ooh, no, the part in Mask of the Phantasm where he goes to his fa- his parents' graves and he says. Mm. I'm so sorry. Grave. I didn't ex- oh, expect yes. to be happy. Because he was with Andrea at the time, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was saying sorry because he didn't. He wanted to be Batman, but at yeah. the same time, he, he was well, expecting that, that's that's like, he's apologizing for his happiness, bro. I mean, that's it's a, it's that's a sad show. question, though. Can Batman Tears. be Batman if he's happy? <laughs> no. It's sad. No. The broodingness keeps him going because if you're sad, you really want to be like, yeah, yeah I'm going to go fuck some shit up tonight. No. No. You're going to be like, you know what? Got to stay. Got to stay. Because a lot of people a lot of people forget that Batman's motivation is way beyond most, most people or most, most beings – that we know in comic books, like if True. he's determined and to I think, do it, uh, he will do it. 
I think the Scott Snyder run answered the question perfectly. Like when he, uh, after Endgame, where he lost his memories, he didn't have any of the trauma to be Batman. Yes. And of course, even Batman has a contingency for him losing his memory. And he had a machine. <laughs> he had a machine that yep. really just he has several. all the trauma mm-hmm. back into him. Which is wild. <laughs> Yes, that's that's so crazy. How determined this man is. He says, "If I forget, I have a machine to make me remember. If I go crazy or somebody takes over my mind, I have a contingency plan for me to think I am Batman yeah. Zarael, and I'm gonna fight whoever's there." <laughs> no contingencies, boy. I tell you, uh, that's a whole other podcast. That that <laughs> is crazy with his fight, bro. That could be a podcast all the time. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Dude. Well, yeah, For whenever sure. whenever you want to talk about Batman, uh, we'll get we'll get deep into that. But like, I think that is a pretty oh. millions of plans. Oh, I I just want to say one last thing. Like, oh, okay, go ahead. Of, like how like Batman, like he has the contingencies and he's just so smart. I love the moment in Superman the animated series where he finds out that Clark Kent is Superman because he left a bat tracer on his cape. And he's from the distance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Superman gets into his apartment and was like, what's this? And he and looks over and he sees yep. Batman and he's from just like, God knows how far away. And he's like... Hmm. That's, yeah, that's probably his, oh, his yeah. slickest moment It is for sure. Yes. Yes. You gotta appreciate him. You gotta <laughs> appreciate him. Doesn't matter how you feel about the man. He's one of those iconic sure. heroes. Marvel DC so, doesn't matter. Real He's out quick, there. we are gonna go ahead and end this off right there. Uh, I am Batman. Where can they find you at on social media? You can find me on TikTok. Yeah, Same right, name. Well, I am Batman. Thank you so much for listening to Crossover Comics Podcast once again. My name is Jeremy, a.k.a. JJ's Comic Stuff on TikTok and everywhere else. My name is Michael, a.k.a. Longbox underscore entertainment on TikTok and Instagram. And we will talk to you guys next time. Peace Take out. Take it easy, guys. Bye.